All right, guys, welcome back to the podcast, the Life Wide Open podcast. Uh, thank you guys for listening and subscribing if you have not yet already. Well, <laughs> should we just jump right into it? I suppose so. Then you f***ed <laughs> up this weekend. Yeah. F- bad. Yeah, big time. Why don't you just take your glasses off, Ken? This is, I, I can't, I can barely see, honestly. Can we get a tight shot in on his eye? <laughs> is there any way we could get a tight shot in on his eyeball? Usually when Ken is injured... It's funny because it's uh, self-inflicted. Not, no offense, Ken, but usually when you hurt yourself, it's for the humor of something we're doing, and it's funny, right? You know, you know, you're not wrong there. Yeah, thank you. It, you, it usually is something. Yeah, it on would my be funny. part or yeah, like when you hopped on the dirt bike and you ran into the tree. Or usually, I tried kicking the ceiling in a bar and you gave yourself a black eye. Usually, I'm in control as as little control I have, but at least I am the one doing it. Right. Yeah, so if, uh, I believe this is out after the video, um, but in last night's video, <laughs> you'll see me pick up an ice cream cake. It was Ken's birthday. It was Ken's birthday. We were celebrating. I pick up an ice cream cake, two lit candles, a giant six and a giant nine. <laughs> and I just wasn't thinking. I went to cake Ken. I, I lean in to blow the candles out. You go the opposite direction with the cake. Candle to the eye. Ken immediately like drops down, grabs his face. I thought I broke his nose because it was it was an ice cream cake. So either way, it would have hurt. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about the candles. And now Ken has, has a, a, burnt a burnt eyelid eye. and a couple different burns on the actual eye itself. Dude, I've been talking about this. Ken's birthday parties are legendary. The you cops did say are this coming. Prior. You said it That's was going to be true. legendary. And now Ken's going to the hospital. His parties are so crazy. God damn, dude. Jesus. He really stepped it up this year. Goes hard on his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it would have been fine if you just want to, you know, if I could have just blown the cake out and we could have enjoyed some nice old DQ ice cream cake. And That was one of those dumb things, though, that, like, you can't even, I mean, you can definitely be mad at Ben, for sure. But, like, it's not, like, you know, something that was actually dangerous. It's one of those, like, fluke things where the candle just that goes in your fluke. eye. It was a fluke. And then my eye got covered in candle wax, and it, I spent two hours digging candle wax out of my eye. On the actual eyeball. That's where it's bad. That's where it's, like, not funny now, you know? Mm-hmm. It like, and, and now I can't really see out of it that well. Hopefully that recovers just fine you still haven't gone to the eye doctor yet so they could just be like, oh. uh walk-in clinic referred me and then i go on thursday so hopefully they're just like oh it'll heal up in a, a week obviously that's what i'm hoping but there's nothing worse than someone getting hurt at your expense and yeah. like not trying to make yeah obviously i was completely in the wrong but like it's all fun and <laughs> you, when you play with fire you're gonna get burnt one of those things and you i feel like class. It's more. just the worst when, uh, you know, even if you hurt yourself doing something, like, you're to blame. But when you hurt somebody else, like, there's nothing worse than that. It, it God does. damn it. And now every <laughs> single time I look at Ken, it's just, like, constant is, reminder. He looks so sad, too. This is honestly, it's like, true. the worst pain I've been in in probably ever. That is Because it's just, like, a hear. searing, like, stinging pain right in my eyeball. And it's like... Like, oh, I can just wipe it to get rid of it. Like, you got something on your eye. But it's like, no, it's just there. It's I can't bad. get rid of it. It's pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. God damn it. At first, I thought Ken was being dramatic. And then, like, I could tell he was actually really mad. But then the next morning, he comes walking up the stairs. And I see his eye. And I was just, like, jaw dropped. Like, I was like, dude. I think the first thing I said was, like, you need to go in. <laughs> yeah, and that's what I, I texted Alex right before that. I was like, hey, can you guys, are you planning on leaving soon? I, <laughs> Hurry I, up. I, can I you just, bring me to the hospital? <laughs> I, not, I need to get to my car at the very least. <laughs> well, we want to finish this movie real quick. <laughs> so I think, Ken, you now have started like a new, I guess, PSA about the dangers of don't, cake don't, smashing someone seriously. with burning candles. Or, or at least blow them out and let the wax cool. Or just take the candles out of the cake. Yeah, maybe. yeah. I thought yeah. the funniest part was, I mean, the only the thing that was funny is your Instagram story, Ken. It was basically Ken, Ken, like, I hope this can all be a lesson. <laughs> I hope this can be a lesson for all everyone in that you shouldn't throw 
birthday cakes with burning candles at someone's face. It's like an obvious <laughs> subtweet. Like you should have just tagged me instead of saying, I hope this is a lesson for everyone. You should have just tagged me and just said at Ben Rod. He didn't want to give you the clout. I mean, smashing a cake into someone's face really isn't that uncommon. I would have done it. So my dad was like, well, that's what happens when you get drunk. You make stupid decisions. And I was like, honestly, I would have done it sober. Yeah, I feel like that was something. I mean, it just wasn't thought out about the candles. If there was no candles, everything would have been fine. Right. But was this partially inspired by, you know, we had gone to Jackass the night before. So you were just like, I want to hurt Ken in a <laughs> really, really bad way. Like, did that fuel you? Did it, No, I definitely didn't go into it with... Those intentions. Are you sure? I think it, dinner, it like sub- it might have been gave you some messages. Yeah. I yeah. feel like at dinner you whispered to me. You said, "I really want to hurt Ken tonight." I don't. I don't know. You, you said that. You did oh, say. I don't think I said that. You did get up on a chair and yell at everyone in the restaurant. Buy this guy some oh, shots. Oh, okay, all right. But you skipped the first part of it, and that's that. I told everyone to sing you "Happy Birthday" <laughs> <laughs> twice. I had three. I had the whole. Bar singing "Happy Birthday" three times. I think we sing three different locations. Way too many times. Four times at least. (laughs) Um, But so, anyways, was that partially inspired by Jackass? I feel like you would have done it regardless. I would have done it regardless. Maybe it was subconscious, but yeah. So we went to Jackass. I don't know if you guys have seen the new Jackass movie yet, but we went to it as a crew. Wow, so funny, unbelievable. I thought it was really good. Yeah, the stunts that they do are just like you can tell that they took a ten-year hiatus and they thought of certain things for 10 years straight and they were just like all right we're gonna come back and be insanely reckless and do the dumbest shit like when people are like oh so you guys make videos like jackass after watching that i was like no no no, not even close we're not even trying to be like them no no it's like when they're like admire what they do dude it's incredible especially when you know the outcome is going to be so 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 painful there's not a chance that it goes right so like when Nitro Circus was making videos and doing crazy things and the movies and everything, everything that they would do, like all the stunts, had a chance. There was like a you know seventy percent chance that you would land it. All the stunts they do in Jackass, none. Set if they the land, trail. if they land it, they cut it. I guarantee they had they like certain <laughs> stunts that went right, and they were just like, well, let's just cut that one. Yeah, they're literally built to fail. So I have a different view on it. Um, I'm like a huge, like, I love Jackass. I grew up watching it. Always thought, like, those guys were, like, kind of my idols growing up. Like, Bam Margera, Viva La Bam, uh, Robin Big, like, like the skateboard. I was, like, a skater kid, and I loved watching, like, the MTV reality shows there were that would be, like, them basically just fucking around, doing dangerous stuff and playing pranks and stuff on their friends, which, like, kind of integrated into... Like, I'd say our channel is, is similar to that in a way. I mean, it's not like it's Jackass like where we're trying to hurt ourselves. But, of, yeah. but it's like, you know, it's it's kind of all relatively in the same group. I had watched, like, the first couple of Jackasses uh, the week prior because, like, I'd go home and I knew we were going to go watch that one. So I was like, I'm going to just watch them. I haven't watched them in a long time. And, like, I thought they were all really good, and I even thought this one was really good. But I don't remember being as wowed watching them in my age now, I was like, damn, like that looked like it fucking hurt. Like that, that was bad. I wouldn't want to do that for like pretty much all the stuff. But uh, I wasn't like necessarily amazed by like the ingenuity of it, if that makes sense. And the reason why I think so is because nowadays it's like you see shit like that every week. Like you see, you see that stuff all the time, whether it's on YouTube or not, you can just go on your Instagram explore page. And my explore page is just funny stuff like that happening, happening, whether they were trying to do that to themselves or it was an accident or whatever. So like you, it was, I felt like that movie was kind of like the same thing as scrolling through my Instagram explore page. I haven't thought of that. I could, I could, yeah, for sure. I mean, there's so many people these days that just want to be famous and they're willing to do anything. Yeah, to be like famous. I mean, if I just personally, I, I, I really appreciate like the ones where there's a lot of thought put into like that so-called bit. Do you, you know? Do you think that's you not being 16 and just being amazed by someone right. willing to take a punch to the nuts? Probably. Maybe I'm getting older. Maybe I'm getting older. I thought it was all funny. I'm just saying, like, uh. 
you know, if if they hadn't if they hadn't already built up their legacy, what so rewind in when Jackass One was released, when the show Jackass, it started off as a show, was like happening and then they went to the movies. Back then, even during like Jackass Three, like these type of videos, like you couldn't you didn't have access to seeing stuff like this back then. You really couldn't find it everywhere like you can now. That's you, true. You There's could no if you looked for it, but it was not much stuff out there. Mm-hmm. And uh, nowadays, I feel like it was all, I mean, not all of it. And I, I loved it. I like. I really like those guys. And obviously, the reason why it's super good is because of the characters that are doing it. But I mean, like most of that stuff, I felt like, I don't know. I just wasn't that amazed by it. And I think it's because it's all accessible at your fingertips nowadays. Well, it's even like with X Games. People are like, yeah, X Games isn't as big because you watch everybody do tricks right as they come out. And you're so flooded yeah. with like, like I follow Instagram, uh, an Instagram account called Kids Getting Hurt. And then there's another one that is Adults Getting Hurt. And it's like people bailing off of big BMX mm-hmm. tricks yeah, and stuff I mean, like that all the time. Round. You can see it every day, every minute if you want. You can watch something new, I feel like. But they had good. I actually really liked when they did more creative things, like when yeah. there was a little more, like you were mentioning. I'm trying to think more of, thought put into it. Like the vomitron at the end was pretty funny. Yeah, when like they had just funny. all the stuff coming together and the opening bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But honestly, generally the whole movie, I was just shocked. I think I sat there like this, dude. Alondra's face was like that. We brought Ryan's girlfriend with. <laughs> she was just like. <laughs> And then she'd occasionally laugh, and then she'd just go, oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I or feel like go, <gasps> I was in shock most yeah, of the movie, honestly. That's what I mean. You forget halfway through the movie that those are, like, real people. Yeah. That, like, real people that don't need to be doing it. <laughs> they are, true. like, so successful. They have so much money. They do not need to be doing it, but they still are, and that that's, like, half the entertainment to mm-hmm. me. And, and I'm not trying to discredit it. Like, I freaking thought it was amazing. I I loved it. I would go watch it again. I'd even pay to go watch it again. I'm a big fan of all the people that are a part of it. But I just like don't remember the same excitement uh that I got out of it as when I was younger watching all those movies for the first time. So back when me and CJ were kids, the very we, me and CJ had a friend Matt. Maybe one day we'll go into the history of Matt. He's to this day We'd have to one have of the on. craziest Legend. motherfuckers I know. Matt he was like our stunt man. <laughs> he, he was, uh, yeah, he was dangerous. And, and like Jackass was a big part of our entertainment and lives back then, right? Because there wasn't really like YouTubers or anything like that. So it was just like those kind of yeah. movies that we like would watch and be uh, influenced, influenced by. by. <laughs> yeah. So back when, uh, let's see, dude, I was probably what ten. You were thirteen, maybe. You had one of those little flip flip cameras. Yeah. So we were always setting up these jumps, like the plastic ramps, and uh, seeing if we could get Matt to jump over things. Well, well, we would all do them. Right. We would would all do them, but Matt always wanted to just push it to the limit. He wanted to be the one to do it a little bit better. Like, he wanted to jump a little bit further, but it was always really hard for him because it just seemed like if he ever went, like, a little bit bigger, we would just fall right up after him and, like, land it right after him <laughs> yeah no matter what it was on if it was dirt bike scooter freaking tubing i don't know you know just like doing stuff like that yeah so there is this tree next to my house this was how he was going to one up us this doing is, a stunt yes. that he knew we would not try to replicate <laughs> after him yeah okay yeah, that's a great way to put it so there's this tree next to my house that had a swing hanging out or uh swing hanging off one of the branches and this um the swing was i don't know probably three feet off the ground like the butt part of it maybe two and a half feet off the ground. Swing so height. Yeah. So we uh, we had a plastic ramp and a good run up. And then I was holding one side and CJ's little brother, who was probably like six at the time, <laughs> yeah. was holding the Hold other the one other side just, just wide enough so For Matt could handlebars. jump his bike through the swing and the handlebars would not get caught on the rope. Right? Makes sense. So there's, yeah. So Matt... Uh, gets a good run up. This is the first try. CJ standing there with his flip camera, <laughs> shooting like 720p. If that, I think it was like 420. Yeah, or and 480. he uh, and Matt gets a big run up and he jumps and he 
perfectly clears the <laughs> swing and, and lands and rides away. And, and you could see like on our faces, we're like, we were like, we cheered him on. Wow, that was crazy. You should do it again. Because <laughs> we were like, there's no way he can do this twice. <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. Like it was just such a slim jump. Yeah. Anyways. So he, <laughs> he, he was like, all right, I'll do it again. Goes around the house, comes back, gets even more speed this time, but he didn't pick his back end up like as much when he was going through the swing. So his back end catches the like the seat part of the swing, and the swing goes up with him, and he's stuck now in this swing. And then the swing comes back down and like lets him go at the bottom and just pile drives Boom. him into the ground. Oh, it was so funny, and it was. It was like the very first stunt I think ever recorded. So CJ's like laughing and oh, you can so hear me funny. in the background dying and <laughs> Matt's on the ground going, oh, oh, didn't he get the wind knocked out of him? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Matt was the star of a couple of YouTube videos back before we YouTubed. We, Cause we had the, the bottle rocket to the face. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. true. Like see, if someone had burnt an eye in that, I would have been like, well, yeah, well, we he wore goggles. He wore happened. goggles. <laughs> He was prepared. Yeah. And then we had the, the pogo stick. The pogo in Ben's stick. Driveway. Pogo Often. stick. The bottle rocket to the face is still on YouTube. It's I think like, I saw it was taken off. Oh, was it? I think the pogo stick down, was still there. But we can just dub it up over this. I'll Matt, put the link in. Matt thought it would go viral if we shot him in the face with the bottle rocket. I don't know what his plan was, honestly. Yeah, did he ever even care about, like, I don't know what his plan was. I think he just was trying to be. The do guy. dangerous stunts. Dude, it was like it, back then it was all about just like, I feel like when you're younger, you care more about like going bigger than other people and like proving your like toughness. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just like doing stuff like that was uh, something that was just a part of our lives. <laughs> Man, he did just so many entertaining things. I would love to have Matt on the podcast one day. Right, I'm he's sorry, just only gotten more entertaining. I got I to gotta get out from behind these lights. Okay, so, you're good. See you, Steve. Steve, you want to hop Steve? in? One Steve to another. One Steve to another. Dude, are you guys going to be able to tell CJ and I apart here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, one of you is wearing a sweatshirt. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm dealing with this uh, cyber quad. Is it, how's it yeah, going? Yeah, he said he'll sell it to us. Fuck he yes. still got it? I said I could come get it tomorrow. Damn, we maybe should have came in cheaper then. Fuck. Yeah. Whatever. Oh well, I didn't even know like that. Those were for sale at all. I didn't That's even know cool, people own those. That's so cool. It'll look real good in the back of Ken's cyber truck. Yeah. Yes, it will. People ask about the cyber truck so much. At least, dude, I I see a comment on it at least like every couple days. Dude, no offense to those people, but like, are you dumb Get a clue, or stupid? Right. <laughs> the the cyber <laughs> truck hasn't hasn't came out yet. So when they go, who? Oh, whatever happened to Ken getting the cyber truck? Well, he would get it, but it's not released yet. The only one who has one is freaking Joe Rogan and Elon. They're like the Joe only. Joe Rogan has one. Yeah, he went to the plant and toured it. And you guys right. see that? But that's it. I think he just got to take pictures of it. Is yeah, it really no, he doesn't is? have one. No, oh. yeah, he's the so only person who's seen it. They're Literally. not even out on the road rolling around. People just, I don't know. I love that people think that out of all the people in the world, Ken is going to be the first person to get one on social media. He is. He and Elon talk every day. Speaking of Joe Rogan, you guys see he's uh, getting canceled, yeah. Try, trying to yeah. get canceled by the mainstream. It's like he's his own form of media, and then the mainstream media is like, I don't know. It's just like the well, left, not left side. Yeah. It's because if Joe Rogan didn't have any opposing views to the mainstream media, It'd they wouldn't try and roller. cancel him. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Joe Rogan pulls like, I don't know, twelve million views on average a podcast, Crazy. and I think I think CNN and all these like other media outlets pull like. 1 million, 2 million maybe. And so it's like, yeah, obviously they're probably pretty upset with it. And uh, they're just going after him for for everything now. Well, or, I they're mean, not upset to. about his views. Uh, no, numbers, no, no, no. It's not. Think. No, no, it's not. It's, it's, well, it was initially the thing because they, you know, he had on some controversial guest um, that didn't fall into the same agenda that all That's these the mainstream media outlets were trying to push. And then now they're trying to say he's racist because they pulled out uh, videos of him saying the N-word. And, and he made an apology on it. And he talks about how all of them were like pulled out of context and how he would never like be racist or try, try and use it in like a, in a uh, derogatory 
derogatory yeah. way. Like negative context way. But I mean, obviously, anybody who wants a reason because they didn't like what he had to say well, about that's like, the or anything so like the, that, they're going to use that against him. But So, I mean, basically what it is, is he is not um, pushing, you know, or conforming to their agenda that they're trying to push, you know, basically about, let's say, right now. So now, since like you know them pulling off spotify isn't change anything these like left uh leftists i don't know what you'd want to call them but they go and dig up all this stuff on the person that they don't like to basically try to derail them or cancel them from that just just because they don't like really what he is you know saying well more than agree? yeah more than it's what like a he, smoke screen. Sorry, it's like a smoke screen. More than what he's they they're saying that he's spreading misinformation because they uh, don't agree with his information. So they're saying it's misinformation. I thought it was really interesting when he was like, "Listen, everything that was a, accepted as fact six months ago was is now like not true." There's so many things that are not true, and he's like, "Things are always changing." I'm just bringing on people who are literal experts in their field. And this is what they have researched at the time. Yep. Right. But he has he has the left. He has the right. He has all these different guests, but they just don't like that uh, he's saying something that yeah, goes against that what goes they against what they're saying, what they want. You know, mm -hmm. exactly. Basically. Yeah. But I just think it's bullshit that then they pull out all this racist card mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. That's when they dig up all this stuff and start. It's not they're they're trying to derail him. Um, on a whole different thing just because of something they don't else. like what he's saying about something else. You know, you know what's interesting, though? Whoever dug those clips up had to have listened to hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of hours of Joe Rogan podcast. I was podcast. thinking about how they did that. How, how, how do you listen to that and then still go, no, this guy's racist? Yeah. I wonder if there's, like, a way they can, like, search through it. I think the saddest part of it is that, like, that's their job. I bet there's yeah. people at CNN, let's say, that their literal job is to go, hey, dig here's your dirt. guy, mm -hmm. dig up dirt. We got to we gotta have something. But I was watching, like, I mean, you can't, uh, again, go completely one-sided on, oh, they're trying to cancel Joe Rogan. So, like, I'm watching this stuff on Reddit, and I, like, see how they compare. He had this guy on that was talking about it in Italy. Like, this is, like, two years ago before it even happened, and how he was, like, genuinely concerned, and now he's had, like, a whole bunch of other people on, and his view kind of opposes like this is Joe Rogan's kind of opposes what his own view was two years ago. But at the same time, it's like, he's talked to a bunch of smart people from now and then. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he could be a little brainwashed, but I think most of it's just knowledge coming in. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I just am sick of cancel culture. And I think eventually it's just going to come around to bite everything in the butt, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah, I think so. I read this post by David Goggins. Actually, I should, I should pull it up. Well, you pull that up. Um, Rumble offered Joe Rogan $100 million oh, to go ex exclusive on their platform. It's an audio platform? I don't know exactly what it is, but it's kind of like the same Spotify deal that he got before, but like they don't do any kind of like censorship or anything like that. Right. Wow. Who the hell is Rumble? <laughs> yeah. Where did they get $100 million? <laughs> I don't know, but just if Joe, Rogan, just if Joe Rogan went over to them, I'm pretty sure everyone would then know who Rumble is. Listen, Joe, you want to do a, a Life Wide Open podcast exclusive? You come here, you just post all your stuff. You got 100,000 subscribers you can start out with. We'll pay you $200 million. That's <laughs> the new high right now. He honestly would probably make that, though, after like a certain amount of years. <laughs> yeah, true. With his sponsors and all that, but I suppose he wants to pocket that. All right, so David Goggin said like a bunch of stuff, basically. And who's David Goggin? Uh, he's like an off author. He's like, uh, he was a Marine. Um, he's just like this crazy, not crazy, but he's like a very fanatical, like work hard. Um, he's super into working out and just like being inspiring, like inspiring yeah. Yeah, his yeah. best self and inspiring other people to do better than what they currently are doing. But basically he like said, he's Joe Rogan's friend. He doesn't think he should have said the N word and all that, but like, he doesn't think he's racist or he says he's not racist. All that. He says this whole spiel saying that he's met a lot of racists in his life, but he knows for a fact Joe Rogan is not a racist. And he mentions in it about cancel culture, we are slowly being walked down a path where we lose our voice. We don't all need to agree with one another, but we have to respect the fact that people should be able to say whatever the fuck they want to say, otherwise known as freedom of speech. Whether you listen or not, 
should be your choice. I remain completely independent with no sponsors or partnerships, so I don't have to have an issue with this. Um, what the hidden message here to me is the fact that people in positions of power don't believe we are smart enough to be able to hear different opinions or capable of making our own decisions. I'd have to read the whole thing. It's so long. I think it's just tough because people are figuring it out with the internet. You know, you never before were, was someone able to just project their voice. Like it was like, you know, like in the old days when people would stand on soapboxes and they'd be like, that guy's fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like now you have a soapbox that you can project malleable, anywhere. Yeah. And then eventually there'll be enough people that will listen to you and go, well, maybe that guy's not so crazy. And so I think that now with the internet and stuff like that, there'll be like a time of people figuring out how they can, I don't know. Right. And even it, then this isn't even canceling, but it's just like, so you get a big enough following, AKA entertainers, influencers, whatever. So you get a big enough following and you are speaking. And then all of a sudden here comes a sponsor. Like that guy just said, I don't do sponsors because I don't want to have to deal with people telling me what I can and can't say. A lot of times that's pretty hard when that sponsor has, endless amounts of money to give you yeah to make you do what you want and sometimes people say no and sometimes people say yes to that then your 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 audience of let's say a million people they then their hopes of tainting them they're like sweet we're paying them enough money to make them say what we want yeah that that that's very it's like part of cancel culture but has nothing to do with it well shout out to spotify for not just canning joe yeah we'll see what happens oh dude i know that's right all these like musicians pulling their music off. I don't understand what their like, what their doing. plan is, dude. Like Thanks. they're just like they're only pushing for a a world of like less free speech. Mm-hmm. Especially what's that one guy's name? The Neil Neil guy? Young. Because isn't one of his songs like his one of his most famous songs is like "Rocking in the USA" hmm. or something like that? Hold on, let me just double check this here. Okay, so Neil Young. One of his most famous songs is Rockin' in the Free World. So you think he would be in favor of free speech? Wow, the irony. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then instead, he's him like pulling this shenanigans where like he's not going to have his music on Spotify anymore because he doesn't like what Joe Rogan is saying, which is free speech. How, hmm. weird, how ironic is yeah, that? that is. How ironic. Yeah. So funny enough, yeah. I have uh, Elon Musk's tweet notifications on because I used to invest in Bitcoin and stuff. And used you could to. pretty much track. No, still do. Uh, but you could pretty much track what it was going to do based on what he said. And he just tweeted, why is the traditional media such a relentless hate stream? Real question. Probably because it sells. Yeah, it true. does sell. The human brain is more attracted to negative than positive. Yeah. Really? Yep. That's yep. true. Sex sells and hate sells. Like you get you when someone's like talking about something that's like bad about somebody, you're way more intrigued than somebody talking about something good. Yeah. Or or I mean just a YouTube video. So and so stole this or that. Yeah, People that love too. to true. see that. You mm-hmm. know? Or is, or I got in trouble for this. From like mm-hmm. an entertainment entertainment standpoint all the way to you like if someone is like that you don't know, let's say it's not your friend, and they're just like they, yeah, you see that they got their car stolen, and you're like, damn, that's crazy, and you kind of like maybe read about it, and you're like, eh, at least I didn't get my car stolen. Their mishap makes you feel like you're sitting Better? in a pretty good place. Mm. But if someone is like, yo, I just won this car, and you're just like, damn, dude, that'd be sick to win a car. I never win anything. You can kind of gravitate towards other people's mishaps to make you feel better for no good reason. Never thought about it that way. When you read something bad about someone else, you're like, you feel like subconsciously, yeah, subconsciously in a better place than them. Hmm. Weird. I don't feel that way. I just try to avoid any kind of negativity, pretty much at all costs. Yeah, you literally won't even listen to sad songs. No, I won't. (laughs) I won't listen to like sad songs like Juice World. I think he's really like he's got some catchy tunes, but they're all sad, depressed, and nasty. Yeah, that's true. Like just makes you sad. Yeah, especially if you're in a sad state of mind. Exactly. Anything like that will just bring you Or you could be in a happy state more. of mind, and then you start listening to those songs, and you like start trying to feel bad for yourself, you know? That's mm-hmm. why I just don't mess with it. Um, today, we sat down and, and like basically planned out you know, a couple of video ideas for the future, and one of our ideas was an RV trip. I'm so Which stoked we, about I, this. I mean, we it, basically, we're just like, we want to do an RV trip, and we want to do it in March sometime. But uh, we haven't mapped it out. 
I mean, yeah, it was just the idea got planted, and then we're like, this would be fun. We I think that'd be here. so yeah, fun. Because yeah, yeah. basically how it started was we were like, what's something? I guess I, I asked everyone, I said, like, what's a video idea that just forget about if you think it would get a lot of views? Forget about if it would have a good thumbnail. Forget about cost. What's something you would want to do, like, just have passion for, like, you think would be really fun and would be excited to go do? I think... One, you said an RV trip, and I was like, that's right. We've been talking about that. So, Which wasn't my necessarily idea, but it's just like the boys Imagine. doing a real road trip. We've all done all the way a, across we've like done America. So, so many, many road trips, trips yeah. in, in, a, in a truck, and they're all awesome, but I'm talking RV. Like RV multiple trip. stops yep. and like just stop s- wherever you want. Messing your own around time. the whole time. Almost you know, like no plan, but to just. Go and going, have fun. Yeah. Start going. Places. And whatever comes our way comes our way. And that's and cool. I always make a video on it. I mean, know? a bunch of people do that. It'd be like I, a two part video mm-hmm. for sure. I mean, I think we'd be at least gone for over a week. But I always see like Buttery do that. He's got his moto van, but like at least him and Medium Boy load up in it. But a lot of times, a few other guys and they, you know, they're like, all right, this we're just going to string up along the coast all the way to Washington over yeah. in Montana and back down. Well, that's the cool part about S- California, sweet. though, is like you're. You're yeah, not too far from a lot of cool places. Yeah. For us, we're gonna have to travel. Our like ways. first, yeah, fifteen hours is just kind of nothing. nothing. Yeah. All right, guys. Brief break in today's episode from today's sponsor, Honey. I'm always online shopping, but I rarely have a coupon re- code ready to go. Honey does all the hard work for me and scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey supports over thirty thousand stores online. They range from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. How it works? Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the Honey button drops down, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Honey was able to save me twenty percent off my new pair of noise canceling headphones. Honey has also found over 17 million members, over $2 billion worth of savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free and installs in just a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the podcast. I'd never recommend something I don't use. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash cboys. That's joinhoney.com slash cboys. Now back to the podcast. If anybody has any cool events or like things going on places to go things to do but from like from minnesota north dakota montana idaho utah california like that kind of that direction and then we want to hit vegas and then maybe like loop back that way Mm -hmm. but we're going west not east in case people in new york are like oh come to come to albany yeah or something like that listening no it needs to be something sick how big of an RV can you drive? Do you need an RV license? No. Luckily, Actually, kind of crazy. That luckily, you, you don't. You don't. Do you, you can drive crazy. a 40-foot RV and pull a 40-foot trailer. And <laughs> what? Just yeah. a unit. Jeez. I mean, that's basically our trailer. Yeah. like 36 feet long. We probably won't have a 40-foot RV, but I mean, like Ken's parents, they pull our snowmobile trailer all the time. Right. And, that we're, and that's who we're, t- who's we're taking? Yeah. Bob said we can take. I gave him that snowmobile, so he said we can take the RV, right? <laughs> <laughs> what snowmobile? The ZRT. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, it'd be, it'd be great to yeah. just like get out. Yeah, we're kind of ex- like burned out that. of, um, we're excited to get out of town for a little bit and like maybe get yeah. to some better weather. And we're in the dog days do. of uh winter around here, mm-hmm. you know, it's not necessarily, it's like kind of the last little stretch that mm-hmm. always kind of just gets old. Cause then once we were talking about, we came up with like 40 more video ideas and we're like, once the snow is gone, we can do that. Yeah. yeah. Once the snow is gone, we do that. When it's warmer, we can do that. So like, we're stoked to come back from mm-hmm. that trip. We should bring the podcast stuff with. Yeah. Oh, for sure. oh my God. Oh, that's a great sure. idea. Yeah. Yeah. And, a bunch and just of get all these different people on. Mm-hmm. We just Some enjoy it too much. Well, right. we have everything we need. We have a Wi-Fi hotspot. We're not coming home. Mike, you'd maybe time. do that. <laughs> I, would, I would love that. I could, I could see go, you doing I could that. probably go for a month. Yeah. I mean, as long as it's not summer, maybe I could too. Mm-hmm. We'll see though. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how we feel after a week or two on the road. And we'll be like, yeah. But so we got that me. coming up. We need to start planning for. If you guys have any suggestions, comment them down below mm-hmm. because uh, we're, we're totally o- open and we're looking for, for some stuff. We got to bring as many pit bikes as we can too. 
All right, luckily they're small. Luckily the dirt bikes, pit bikes, and maybe the shifter carts. We can fit a lot of machines in our trailer. Mm-hmm. But then you put some sleds or a side by side, and you're just yeah packed. Full. Yep. So we'll figure that out. We also actually do need to figure out an RV. So I got a yeah, notification. Need to figure out an RV. So I got a notification today from Robin Hood and it said, "Happy one year anniversary, Ben. You've been investing for one year. That's it." Yes, that is it, Mike. And it feels I, like all the time. Well, I'm, I'm again, <laughs> I don't even mean this in a bad way, but it feels like, and I know CJ has, but it feels like you and CJ have been talking about crypto and you two well, not, for a long time. Besides, I, I know besides for it. Bitcoin and stuff. Right, okay. I guess oh, that's, Robin that's Hood, like yeah. Coinbase. But um, yeah. yeah, just normal stonks. Yeah. Well, how's your investing going, Ben? Are not, you up at all? No. So, so <laughs> something that worries me no. is, you know, obviously I know to stay clear or dump whenever you buy any kind of crypto or mm-hmm. stock that I have, I know that shit's going down quick. Yeah. So something that concerns me is you just bought two rental houses last week. Is that does that mean the housing market's going to shit? Because it, it might be time the, for us I'm, to list the house. I'm gonna crash the entire co- economy, baby. <laughs> Jesus, if dude. that it, happened, like, it'd just be funny. Right? Not actually. Right? Ben, why don't, you, why don't you go and buy like a Lambo or something cool? So that way, all yeah. the other car, car prices, prices can go down. down, and we can all just go back to living life in peace. Normal, yeah. Something tells me that's exactly what's gonna happen when I do that too. <laughs> Probably, yeah, dude. I uh, last week. Um, I was on my Robin Hood and, and, uh, or Coinbase or something. And I've, I used to have um, quite a bit in Shiba because back when Shiba kind of blew up, I was dabbling in that and everything. Didn't make any money, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> I was dabbling in it. I actually don't think I lost much. Well, in that. that was like the small, if like, ben only Doge replacement, right? Right, right. Because it, it was, it was down. He considers it a win. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because it was down and then it skyrocketed. But of course, I didn't sell. And then it went crash back down to where it was so the other day after like six months i was like you know what i'm gonna just sell this it's not doing anything it hasn't gone anywhere in literally six months i'm gonna just sell it and and i was gonna buy like an nft or something which i would have lost money on too <laughs> so i sell the shiba and then ryan shoots us a text in the group chat today and goes shiba with the sneaky 50 percent increase <laughs> overnight <laughs> ben dump everything else you own just sell it all, dude. I've actually been thinking about it. Do us all a favor. Yeah, it's bad. I don't know what. It's bad. It just your timing or your <laughs> luck. You know what? You, you. I mean, they say this with everything. If you just don't sell, then you can never lose. That's true. You got to keep <clears throat> selling, Ben. That's why I was like, I haven't sold ever. All right, Mike. Mike, well, have you even bought any crypto? Uh, no, but I haven't sold any either. Well, there you go. <laughs> I saw a really... No, of course I bought crypto, yeah. but no, I just have literally never sold. I don't see the point. I'm waiting for like Ethereum. You yeah. buy, I bought it at like 25, waiting for that shit to go like 10,000. Yeah. I yeah, saw a really or funny... Or just at that point, just hold on to it. Yeah. I saw a really funny tweet and it was like parents telling me to invest and do stuff like that. And it was like my investing portfolio and I was down. I'm down like 15%, meaning I've lost 15% of the money that I put in. What? Sounds nice. Brian. I thought it was supposed to be easy. You, I thought you could have just, just used that money for fun, Ryan. Yeah. Might as well have gone to Vegas. I know. I, I, I actually probably would have had better luck gambling. I mean, it, this can go back up, and I'm still holding strong. It will. But still, yeah. stuff's hard. Dude, I. Every single time I either invest or like gamble of any sort, I just lose. I'm just not lucky or good at that. And, um,. I think I'm going to stop investing well or gambling, gambling for sure. Pull That's tabs for sure. Probably smart. Mm-hmm. Pull tabs. But you like, you sure. never played. Yeah. But we go I, to the bar, we buy a bunch of pull tabs. We lose our ass. We're like, Hey, we never do this. Not never. We don't do this very often. Ben really doesn't, doesn't loses his ass quits. Yeah. I think, but I'm, if you quit blackjack, then now we're talking. I don't think that you necessarily should, but if you do, that'll be a statement. Well, I'm not. I don't think I'm going to do that. I don't think I, don't think I need to do that. I'm, yeah, I'm, only losing, I'm only losing like a couple hundred at a time, Mike. It's nothing that's going to bankrupt my future kids. That's where it starts. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see about this whole housing crisis, though. I don't think the housing market's going down anytime soon, honestly. I hope not. I think that like just everything that got raised up with 
you know, inflation is just, this is just the new standard. It's where it's at. Cause I mean, when has it ever really gone down? You know, look at, look at in like the housing crash, the cost <laughs> of like a house and <laughs> yeah, but like it doesn't ever go came, back down. It came back up, but to it, like 20 it, years or like 10 years. Like I feel like everything just constantly is always rising up. Yeah. The uh, cost of everything well, is more expensive. Bread, fucking cars, mm-hmm. um, you know, gas, like just everything in, in general consistently is more expensive because the value of the dollar is just getting less and less. So you have to spend even more and more. And that's what I tell myself. I, I say, hey, you know, this money sitting in the account is going to lose money. So I might as well lose it faster. You know, it's like a race. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great mentality <laughs> it's weird that we like you were never able to i mean you were obviously but you weren't able to necessarily see inflation like month to month you weren't able to like oh like it's happening it, it was always just this slow and steady thing but as of the last like two years you're able to see the yeah. prices in front of your eyes go up but on I, everything and it's like the same thing here's another example minimum wage when i was in, a kid getting my first job Minimum wage was seven, seven twenty five. Yeah, seven. Nowadays, what is even minimum wage? Like people at McDonald's I, are making like fifteen dollars an hour. Minimum wage yeah. isn't that much higher, but base pay is a lot higher. Yeah, now. yeah. Like I so, mean, which yeah, is McDonald's is hiring at like fifteen. Yeah, yeah plus. that's not like, minimum just think wage. About right? that, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like everything has just gone up. It's true. It's well, true. it's because they have to to get employees, and then they can't get because em- everything can't else get is em- more expensive. They can't get employees, so then they have to pay them more. So then they got to charge people more for the hamburger. Like, and do then- they even have a dollar menu? Like, go to McDonald's. Make Shit two, three, is like fifteen menu. bucks, dude. McDonald's is just as expensive as eating yeah. anywhere else, dude. Like, I'll go there, like, ah, fine, whatever. Like, I'll go get McDonald's because it's quick and it's gonna be cheap. I end up spending like thirteen bucks. I'm like, well, Jesus, I should have just gone to the to the pub and yeah. got on a burger. Grilled by a guy on a grill, you know, and yeah, at least had a beer with it, <laughs> you know. So there was a uh, CNBC pie chart posted, <laughs> and it said the budget breakdown of a twenty-five-year-old who makes a hundred thousand dollars a year uh, and is excellent with money, and it's a uh, typical monthly spendings pie chart, and it's <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's got uh, eight hundred twenty-five dollars. To rent, which is probably pretty accurate. Um, seems cheap. Yeah. That's really if cheap. If you're living a that's that's really on your cheap. own, that is cheap. But yeah, most um, 25 year olds make 100 grand a year. No, no, just a 25. No. no, okay. And then it's got 615 allotted to donations, <laughs> dining out 250, groceries 400, um, and then. Cell phone forty dollars. What the house cleaning what? thirty dollars. Internet twenty dollars. Uh, transportation one hundred thirty dollars. Like, are they high? You think twenty five year olds making a hundred grand are donating six hundred bucks a month? I don't That's know. A lot. So mainstream media, pretty out of touch. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> like the the fact that they even made that uh, is such a niche uh, thing, you know, to beat I guess twenty five and making that much a year mm-hmm. and come across this and go, oh, it's not accurate at all. Yeah, I thought that was a little ridiculous. I pulled mine up, though, just my credit card spending report to see just from expenses, not my investment portfolio. Otherwise, I'd be probably looking super dumb if I showed that. But, um, yeah, it tw- surprisingly, a low amount of of uh, only 25% to restaurants and food. Really? In the last month and a half at $1,700. Yeah, I was say, still $1,700 eating out. <laughs> yeah. You spent seventeen hundred dollars eating out last month. Uh that's since the beginning of December. Oh, uh, so the last three months. months, two months, two months. I don't know. Which I don't even want to look. Yeah, it seems I. I, yeah. I don't know. We all for sure spent have spent more. Than I that. feel like Ben goes out to eat the least out mm-hmm. of anyone, so mm-hmm. that's very <laughs> concerning. Stock what? What's your stock X bill? My stock, <laughs> it's your X, stock bill? X. How bill. many shoes? shoes bill? Yeah, hopefully they give you rewards points. They, that would technically be under uh, merchandise and supplies. Which is your highest category. Which is my highest category, but that's also just like random stupid shit, and that's 4700 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> my new goal is to save money, and the only time I'm going to spend money is when it's investing or investing in a YouTube video. You're going to eat eating air? Out. Yeah. No, ramen. 
Oh, I guess I going back to those days. What about pe- putting gas in your car? Well, obviously you gotta get gas. What do you think I'm gonna get a bike? <laughs> I start pedaling the bike. I only drive the GTR when we're filming. <laughs> <laughs> you could just catch rides back and forth with Mike. I really and could. I get a true. horse. That's the one thing I've thought about. It's like realistically could ride share here and there. It doesn't have to be every day, but I'm like, ah, it's just nice. It's just nice having your own car. Luckily, we don't make an hour commute. Yeah, it's not if we had to drive an hour to work, I would not yeah, drive every true. day. Totally ride with you guys. Yeah. Damn. CJ and I, well, we had our snowmobile meetup this weekend. Yep. Which was honestly a, it was awesome. It's a ton banger. of people came out. We had snow. Big turn. We came out and rode snowmobiles. That was the most snowmobiles I've ever ridden with. Yeah, it was By insane. Far. It was literally miles of snowmobiles just in a line. I directed traffic in Cormorant because like everyone would come up and stop and then go and it was just taking forever. So I like came out and was like being a traffic cop. It's like pretty entertaining. stopping people. Yeah. And so I'm going and I'm kind of focused on like this direction for a second. I turn around and it was a sheriff. Oh. And I was like, yeah. so, what do you do? so I stopped the snowmobiles and I was like, come on through. And he just like rolled through and kind of like looked at me and waved. Oh, I bet he was happy. You were. Yeah. yeah I mean, it was probably traffic. good. I was yeah. standing out in like a black coat and black snow pants and a black jacket i was like freaking blending into the Dude. road but i mean it worked so the dnr was out there handing tickets out to everyone not everyone but as many people as they could as they could yeah our good old pal jacob <laughs> the same guy who's giving us a ticket for everything uh and I, I guarantee you they were trying to get us but it's like how the fuck do you know which one's which there was so many snowmobiles and everyone had their helmets and their gear on mm-hmm. and i guess he pulled someone over right in front of ben and just gave him a laundry list <laughs> of tickets. Because I guess his can was too loud. He did a wheelie. I didn't even know you couldn't do wheelies. I didn't know that either. Yeah. But he got a ticket for that. And then obviously he didn't have his registration done or his trail Snow whatever. Snow flap. Oh, is it the same oh they line? get you for yeah, everything, everything, dude. It's yeah. ridiculous. But, I just uh, thought it'd be no registration. But yeah, like the snow flap, the can I get. Is none of us got stopped. <laughs> nope. Yep. Thankfully. Yep. Yeah, yeah Jake glad. got stopped in Jake our driveway. Jake got stopped too. Yeah, even our even Jake uh, Sherbrooke got stopped in right in our driveway. <laughs> How it ironic. It would have been tough if they would have stopped. Well, I was in the front, so I had you know. Yeah, you were. Everyone would have stopped hundred, right behind hundreds you. Hundreds of snowmobiles behind me. So I don't Bro, know. Everybody would have stopped. Been pretty would've intriguing. Because then he would have been able to go right down the line. Holy crap! Can you do that? Just hold them. Well, I no. got everyone stopped. By no. the the third person back. Would everyone like, would just I'm start just moving. Gonna, Go. Yeah. yeah, but it was him yeah, trying it was, to give us all tickets. Everyone just like scattering, dispersing. Mm-hmm. It was chaotic for sure. And then we stopped on a pond and all drove up a hill and watched everyone roll their sleds down and stuff. God damn it. And then Mike Snowmobile rolled right on top of him. <laughs> it was like I was watching all these. No offense, like I'm by no means a expert snowmobiler, but mo- like these noobs <laughs> try go up this hill and they would just roll their sled down it. Pretty much, like, 90% of people were making it. And then there's, like, this yeah. 10% or 5% that were rolling their sleds down or hitting trees or falling off. And then all, I, all of a sudden I hear Ryan yell, CJ, CJ. And I turn and look, and it's freaking Micah underneath his <laughs> snowmobile, trapped under a snowmobile. And, like, four people, like, jump off and, like, have to run over and pull it off. And I was like, what? That was my favorite part is, like, the... The level of whenever anyone else flipped over, everyone goes, oh, and then, like, mm-hmm. you go up and help them out. And then I did, and it looked like... It looked like we you gotta were... We got my car! It looked well, like you, you were trapped, trapped under, under the okay. snowmobile. I didn't know. I was good, but I didn't know how it was. So you looked like you were being crushed, crushed, for sure. How many people came to your rescue? I mean, just like, like four. four, but, like, they, like, were just, like... It was so funny. Look, you looked That's like funny. you needed urgent assistance. Yeah. Everybody I think else I was, was close, like, too. Were you embarrassed? I was a little bit, yeah, because I had gone up three, four times Dude, before that, honestly, and then I started to get cocky. I didn't even. Oh, go so up it was it was straight up. I did go like up on accident. Go. You weren't trying to be funny. No, 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 yeah, because I'd hit it, and then like it's starting to get chewed up. I'm like, all right, this will probably be one of my last times, and then I just hit a big dirt clump. I was nervous <laughs> when everyone was watching. I was like, honestly, I just don't trust myself mm-hmm. to fucking do in front it. of this Which whole crowd. I knew right. I could, but then so when everyone went, I I went up it and left, but uh, I didn't want to crash in front of everybody looking. Yeah, I look like a noob. At the very beginning, I was like giving everybody high fives. I just hopped off my sled, getting GoPro, giving everybody high fives, and I ran really far from my sled, and I was running back, and some kid just hits me <laughs> with his ski. Ran him over. Yeah, I mean, he didn't well, run me over, but he like 
bumped into my boot with Swoop his your skin, legs just, out. yeah, knocked me over. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's <laughs> like, say? I don't know, I didn't see you. <laughs> I didn't see like, you. I know there's a lot going on, but I was like, all right, keep your eyes open. <laughs> we got a lot left Mike of the ride here. Mike just screams at the kid. No, I Idiot. didn't. He came up and then took a picture with us and was like, I'm the kid who knocked you over. And I was like, hey, thanks for telling me. I was wondering who it was. He was, uh, he was driving an Articat, so. That's funny. CJ and I uh, were talking to this guy. We saw him kind of standing off in the distance, and he never really came into the crowd, and we're like, it's super hard to talk to everybody who comes, So, but we saw this kid, and we're like, oh, he doesn't really seem like he's coming up to say hi, but you can tell he wants to. And so CJ and I went over and talked to them. His name was Peter. Yep. And he actually... Hey, Peter. He... <laughs> <laughs> was telling us he came down from Grand Forks and he was Amish. Yeah. Well, he used to be Amish. He used to so be Amish. Oh. He used to live in the... Uh, Hutterite. The Hutterites. Oh, what is that? So okay. he was an Amish. Yeah, but he, he left the... Uh, I don't know what they call them, their village or whatever. The colony. The we colony. We should have him on the podcast. Dude, I'm oh so my intrigued at least like a by video. that. Yeah, no, yeah, he left. Pot, yeah. He left his colony in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. To he uh, he had to call somebody. I don't know how he called because he didn't have a phone. But he had to contact somebody, and they came and picked him up in the middle of the night, brought him out to like Staples, a small town, and mm -hmm. like it's just crazy to me because I was like, so how long have you been watching? He said uh, about around a year. He's just the nicest guy. He was a real so nice. nice. Guy. I remember. And uh, but it was just so I was fascinated. It was mm -hmm. so easy to talk to him too because I was I had so many questions. It would be really cool to get him on. I, Ryan and I were talking. Yeah, Ryan and I were talking about him then. It's Amish hat. Well, Ryan and I were talking about him then <laughs> last night, and I was like, oh, I, I wonder if he has an Instagram. And I was trying to find his Instagram because it was in the, uh, it's in the, you know, I just was looking at my followers, but I couldn't find him. Mm. So I mean, who knows? I mean, I but he did say he listens to the podcast. So Peter, really? Peter, Peter, comment your Instagram down below if you do. Hopefully, you listen to this because. We, sh we should honestly have Peter on. That'd be really interesting. Dude, I'm so fascinated by the Amish culture and especially the one just right down the road, the Hodoroids. Right. It's yeah. not far from here and I've never right. met anybody. I've never even really well, met anybody. Well, it's because anybody. they have like two weeks when they, when they turn 18. I think they have like two weeks oh. or a month to leave, but they don't give them any money. They don't give them like any... Obviously not a phone. They don't have a choice. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like that. And they say, okay, if you want to go and leave, like go out and, and live your life. But if you want to come back, this is your only opportunity. So you either leave now Stressful, or you come dude. back now. Which I think this is how it goes. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. But get this, dude. So like he's 20 years old now or, you know, a year ago, maybe it would have been 18 or 19. I don't know. But he's experiencing all this stuff where he's never been on the internet. He's now got a phone, like, and then he finds out, like, imagine how much freaking stuff is out there. You think the Hooderides would come after us if we put them on the podcast? No, though? no, they're nice. They're, people. they're nice people, but I don't but, know. We'd have to double check. Yeah, sure. how much, how much he's talking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd be interesting if he doesn't feel comfortable. Then I'd understand, but mm -hmm. um, maybe we have to bleep his name. I eh, know he's just said Peter. I don't even know his last name. It's fine, mm -hmm. but I nice guy, it. nice guy, and we need to get him on here. Wow, that'd be great. Yeah, at least just talk to him. It was so. It was interesting. Could you imagine? It wasn't really the situation to ask questions because we were literally standing in a cold lot. parking lot with a bunch of people around, all around us. But could you imagine experiencing life that fast? At, the, at this saying. age, at this that's age, thing. that's what that's I mean. the you, part that would be like so amazing and overwhelming. Oh, yeah. I wonder what I'd his be, deciding factor to leave was. That I didn't ask him, but I would love to ask him on the podcast if he wants to come on. That'd be mm -hmm. freaking sick. We should get him on here, and then we also need to get Millennial Farmer on here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. If you guys haven't told, can't tell. We love to have in the boys chats, but when we have like guests on, it's just so much easier. Mm -hmm. It's just I don't know. I feel like it's more fresh because mm -hmm. we know so much about each other. It's mm -hmm. tough though. Living in Minnesota, there's not many. And no. there's actually just one other YouTuber, <laughs> Millennial Farmer. So we're trying to get him on. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we were yeah. supposed to meet up with him last week. But the weather was like nasty, nasty. And so I just we were like looking him up crazy how many views he pulls. Dude, you know, far for farming not, YouTube It's not is. that it's undeserving. We're just a legit mind blown that there's that many people out there watching him do basically day-to-day -day farming he's yeah. a relatively big farmer it's entertaining right? though he's an entertaining yeah. character it's, it's funny not, yeah. it's not necessarily yeah. the content it's the character right yeah, yeah. he's yep. funny uh speaking of the ride out though um it's really cool we were talking about this afterwards it's really cool getting the chance to meet everyone that comes out to it obviously we wish that we could you know spend more time and be like more personable with each person because obviously if you if you drove four hours or some people drove like eight hours like you want to meet us but it's so hard 
to give each person, um, you know, enough time to like have a conversation or, or have like a personal interaction with you because then the line gets a little bit longer and then you got to have uh, that same interaction with the other people that drove eight hours. And it's just, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough thing to balance, but we want to figure out a way to, you know, be able to show everyone our gratefulness of, of coming out and supporting us. So I don't know. We don't know what that looks like. Mm-hmm. If we're going to keep doing the meets meetups like that. Yeah. Because we hate for people to feel like, Oh, they didn't give you know, me the time of day. And it's mm-hmm. not like, we don't want to. It's just there's so many people. Really it's, it's, it's like so overwhelming. overwhelming. Yeah. I'd say one nice thing is that we're pretty established in what we're doing and what our what our personalities and our roles and all this. Like before, we were like a package deal. Still obviously are. But if you, like some people are, are in a sense, they're almost equally as stoked to meet one or two of us as they are the whole crew. I'm not saying you're going to come to the meetup and not meet at least all of us at one point or get to say hi. But like, you know, if someone gets to grab a picture with CJ and I, they're still like just as stoked as it is, and then grab. Yeah, a picture maybe we, with, you know? maybe we like separate so then you can kind of be. And that's more. what I had thought. I'm like, if I I, I can take a picture with a hundred people real quick and have a hundred conversations, but if if I need to go, CJ, get in the get over yeah. here. That's when it gets. Yep. That's when it gets long. Yep, mm-hmm. exactly, and that's that's just part of the like the group wanting we want to be together as a group. Well, we want to yeah. be together as a group, but like you know, a lot of YouTubers they're just you know, one or two guys, it's a lot easier to manage than five guys, burgers and fries. Yeah. Being a group, you know, it's a little bit more moving parts. So, you know, anything else? No, I think we're good. Only, only the last thing I want to say is I think twin sick, the band that we were at uh, last weekend is going to be a big deal someday. Oh, have oh we yeah. Been? That's it. But I mean, they were just in that one video. But uh, they I just want to. I just want to have that publicly noted because I that, really yeah. do think they're gonna. That's yeah. your comeback to when I said that. Yeah, in this, yeah. In this day. <laughs> yeah, That's those true. guys are killing it. So mm-hmm. shout out them. Yeah, dude, they are. Well, it's one thing to become like, hey, I want to. CJ and I are gonna start DJing, dude. People will pay you to go do shows and you know DJ at bars or whatever. But when you start making original music and it's good, mm-hmm. like they have like two songs yeah. and and they're good. That's when you start taking off. They, anybody can DJ. Not anybody. You know, but like they just have it though. They there's certain it. people that just got it, and they they've got it. Like they've got the looks, they've got the the attitude, they've got the, kind of uh, the lifestyle. They've got the lifestyle. They love to party, get uh, the party going. Yeah, get yeah, the party I mean, going, girls, and they're, and they're yeah. insanely talented. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I'm excited to see where they. Yeah, go. Yeah, it'd be cool to do like a on the you know rock out with your dock out type vibe, but with that with the music we want, DJ and big lake party, that'd be sick. For sure. Or like a shop party. I well, don't know how we'd do that. But that'd be lit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that'd be sick too. Sounds like Evan just rolled in, so. Good Evan! Time. You want to hop in? Sure. <laughs> Evan, you got a clip. Pull up. Oh, are those cold? Mike, you yeah, stay uh, on. Yeah, Evan. relatively. Relatively? Are they really cold? Oh, yeah. fuck yeah. These are cold, dude. They're all the fridge in Wadena. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Take a seat, Evan. What are you doing back here? You're back again. I, and I mean, I love it. I'm great. I'm staying for good this time. Oh, oh really? Really? Let's go. Okay. Oh, Have you seen his eye? <laughs> I know. Oh, man. Well, Evan, you were there when it happened, right? Dude, Ken, I feel seriously bad for you, bro. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. What was that? Mike. I don't know why I spelled. That's what happened. Evan's been staying with us here now for a week. This has been a week. I thought you were gone. I was honestly like missed it, but now you're back. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, on Friday, a uh, week and a half ago, whatever, we went to yeah. Iowa I've, every single day. You've been with us since every like day. 10, 11, 12 days. 12 or days. Yeah. We got to go for a month. <laughs> <laughs> Evan. You're so on brand. The twisted tees, you come walking in like everyone at home must just be like, this guy's just always strapped, which you are partially. So so that led me to think about something. I uh, I signed something this weekend. Evan was at the, at the ride out and Evan has become an influencer in himself. I mean, people are coming up to you asking for autographs, taking pictures, all that. We'll get to that in a second. But I was signing this thing, and it was already signed by you, and it said, stay twisted, Evan. <laughs> and I thought that was the funniest thing in the world. 
I yeah. mean, there's a couple meetings. I mean, like twist the throttle, twisted T. Yeah, like, it was good. Yeah. I thought it was great. I thought it was really funny. But uh, what do you like think about that? Like, like is it just? I don't know. Is it kind of? It's relatively new to you still, isn't it? Yeah, it's pretty crazy having kids want my autograph and kind of like why? Yeah. <laughs> why would it's you cool, want my dude. autograph? <laughs> but yeah, no, it's super cool. And then just like talking to them and they're hyped and you know ask them how their day's going and it seems yeah. like it means a lot to them so yeah it's super cool yeah dude it's funny i mean just watching uh you like kind of become like a star blossom in your own yeah all just, thanks to my friends <laughs> well, yeah no, you no, did it no. for yourself though no dude you will go and, and post a dirt bike video of you doing a wheelie on the ice or you doing like a massive turn on the ice and it'll get like an insane amount of views like on instagram reels like you were telling me the other night that um somebody reposted the video of you doing like the big swooping turn on the ice and it got 50 million views on instagram reels 50 million views Holy think about that 50 it's, million and people. it's just evan just going ding ding or, ding ding yeah, ding ding <laughs> on an un, untagged yeah i was like they, that's, that's bullshit bro that's yeah, bullshit that's, that's, that's some bullshit god damn but a lot of them are tagged yeah, I like would say like that, 95 yeah, like 10 million views, people. 5 million dude, views. Evan's got like 50k tagged. followers. That's yeah. freaking good, dude. dude. I remember hanging out with you guys when I was at like 6 or 7k or something and then you're like CJ was like we're getting you to 10k or whatever. <laughs> and that happened real fast. Yeah, dude. I don't I guess I don't even know how long it's been, but I'm pretty sure it's God. hardly been a year. Like a year it's ago so I awesome, had 10k, dude. I'm sure. Evan, you should start getting Instagram brand deals. How do I do that? <laughs> <laughs> we actually might be able to help you with yeah, that. Yeah, we could maybe figure it out. Uh, what do your parents think about, like, all this? Because uh -huh. we met your parents, and I don't know why. I just thought it was – I was so uh, – like, I was almost, like, surprised because you are, guard. like, polar opposite of both your parents. I, I would not expect you to be the uh, – uh, I don't know. Just like the result of them, like the and I, I love you, Evan. Their offspring, and I really like them too. Like, no, but I you guys are polar opposites. I agree with what you're saying completely. <laughs> I see that. Uh, I think now, if anything, they've supported my riding the most they ever have. Like when I first started getting into it, they were so over it. Like your mom why was worried you, about you getting hurt. Yeah, and like you've never rode dirt bikes right. when you're younger. Like, why are you gonna go try to hurt yourself now? Like mm -hmm. you have a job and. Right. Responsibility. I can totally see that. And then obviously, yeah, you can't turn away after you're like, well, clearly not only you're doing well doing it, but people like watching you do it. You Evan, started riding dirt bikes when you're 20 years yeah, old. That's crazy. Like that's so late in the game for people to be like really talented. I feel like. Yeah. I think it's good though. Cause it keeps it super fresh. If I would have started when I was eight, I might've burnt out by the time Been I was 20. Or something. Right. I mean, you yeah. never know either yeah. that or yeah. I'd be super good but. it was like really in time though because like you you've done bmx and stuff i feel like you had the uh like the build up to it everything slightly kind of leads into another yeah no i think i had like a proper background of yeah just doing all kinds of action sports for 100%. lack of a better word so is, um slim gonna get that snowmobile going then dude he's pulling the uh, <laughs> He's pulling the jugs off it tomorrow <laughs> to so assess clear. the damage. Yep. We sent the Mountain Max home with Slim in his minivan. You guys will probably see that in the video. But uh yeah, tailgate open. He had a three hour, let's say three hour drive home. His tailgate poor or, wife. Like, I felt bad for the her. The lift was gate like, was open. This guy's gonna be driving home with the back open four hours. You took that little video, he's just cheesing. Yeah, did you ever talk to him? How was that ride or that drive home? No, I, I think the heat was fine. I mean yeah, I the talked heat's to him. blowing in the front. It was all good. We pulled in to get gas at the Wadena gas station, and we're in the store, and we're checking out, and some other guy walks in, and he's like, no, that's one way to haul a snowmobile, and then another woman in line starts chirping in, and before we knew it, we got a group of people <laughs> yep. standing around the van <laughs> checking it out. Yep. It's, it's so Midwestern. Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. Then you got Slim, like the most Midwestern guy I know. He's got something to say at all times. Well, you know, the <laughs> minivan heater. <laughs> Well, that's sick. He's going to get that thing going. Yeah, we told him that he could have it as long as he just gets it going and that we get to see it fire up again. I think he still thinks we're going to, like, take it back from him, though. Like, he couldn't 
believe that we were just giving it to him. We were like, no, you're doing us. You're doing you us a favor have it. here. You and he's like, have it. <laughs> you guys like, should actually steal it back. Wait till he has it good. Like, I know the code to get into his garage and just steal it and I'll... That'd be pretty funny. Yeah, he that won't. He won't know funny. until the video drops. <laughs> <laughs> we should steal his dirt bike. Then he'd really be. Sad. He'd probably cry. <laughs> <laughs> no, he would cry. That. I'd be afraid of getting shot if I snuck into he his would. house. Dude, you you would rather steal his wife than steal. Yeah. His <laughs> well, that's, what he, that's what he said when she was joking around, and and he's like, "You could keep her as long as I got my KTM. I'm fine." <laughs> he loves that thing. When she was kissing Ken for his birthday. On the cheek. That is what she was doing. <laughs> so it's not a burn, it's pink eye? Oh, no, it's a burn. <laughs> Dude, it looks worse than my pink eye. Mine was in both eyes, but Ken, if he shows you his eyeball, it is burnt. God, yeah, it's tough. It's bad. It's bad. It's not Man. what you want to see. Good. And on that note, let's just hope the, the real doctor this week gives us good news, gives him good yeah. news, most importantly. But, like, seriously... So you only went to the walk-in, and now he's got to see a real doctor this week. All walk-in doctors, right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan goes, no, they just all couldn't walk-in doctors. Right yeah. now. <laughs> they just the walk-in doctors just couldn't help, just couldn't give him the help, dude. It just reminds me, like when I like busted, when I broke all four, four of my five toes in my foot. I didn't have health insurance at the time. Pretty stupid, but that one was kind of on my mom since I was only like fifteen. Or 16. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> she takes me to the walk-in clinic. And they're like, dude, why'd you come here? <laughs> you know, like that vibe. Your foot's and flat. They, I just love it. They're, yeah, they're like, this is like talking to the other nurses. This is the craziest walk-in like injury we've ever had. I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't be here. I just that's, that's why I should never have came here. And they're like, yep. You got to go to the ER. I'm like, cool. <laughs> I already knew that. What do they fix at the walk-in? I mean, they give you like, you know, like strep throat, cold medicine, like uh, prostate checks, like uh, physicals, all that stuff. But like nothing serious. <laughs> okay. Maybe they, oh, stitches. They'll, they'll do stitches and stuff. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. Anything else yeah. you want to talk about? You got anything, Evan? <laughs> anything you want to say you've always wanted to say? <laughs> Not that I can think of. Fair enough. Say Nothing? don't. Don't let me hear me. On that note, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't. And we will see you guys next time. Peace out. Thank you, Steves.